Hi, John Rice, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, coming to you with five tips for your next move. Specifically, if you're looking at downsizing, or as I like to refer to it, right-sizing, these tips are going to help you through that. You can use them for any type of move, but specifically, if you're looking at getting a new floor plan, maybe uh, something that's a little bit more conducive to your lifestyle, this is going to be something you're going to want to check out. Five tips. Here we go. Let's start off. As you're thinking about your next move, there's really five things we need to think about to make it the most successful and the smoothest transition. Here we go. So number one, let's talk about downsizing versus right-sizing. Well, if you look at Merriam-Webster's dictionary, the definition for right-sizing is to undergo a reduction to an optimal size. And I think about that with the key word optimal size. It might be that you need all the space that you're in, but you need it rearranged. That's something to think about. And that's why I like to call it right-sizing. You're not always going to be looking for something smaller. You're going to be some looking for something that's the right fit. So number one, you want to ask questions. And you want to start off with this right away. So ask yourself these questions. How do you want to enjoy life? Are there certain hobbies? Do you want to entertain guests? Are pets a factor? Do you want to have uh, gatherings at your location? So think about these. You know, are you into boating or woodworking? Are these uh, hobbies going to be impacted by your new location? Another one, if you could enjoy one thing every day or every week, what would it be? Would it be like walking, boating, traveling? Whatever the case may be, think about that and how you want to be living your lifestyle. And then finally, also ask yourself, if you could eliminate one thing from your life to make it easier, what would that be? Would that be less cleaning, closer to amenities? Maybe you're 15, 20 minutes from a grocery store and you want to be closer. No more stairs. These are things that you want to just be thinking about. You can even take that a step further and say zero step altogether. So not even a step from the garage into the home or anything like that. So think about how do you want to be living your next inside your next place? All right. Second, tidying up. Uh, one of my favorite authors and social media people, Marie Kondo, put together a book uh, called The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. And in there, she specifically says, start by discarding all at once intensely and completely. Then go through and decide, does it spark joy? Being surrounded by things that spark joy makes us happy. And three, if you can say without a doubt, I really do need this no matter what anyone else says. And if you like yourself for having it, then ignore what other people think. You're gonna retain that memory making item. And when it comes to memory making items, I've got a little tip here for you. So something else to consider. Here's is an excerpt from the home edit by uh, Clea Shearer and J Jonah Templin. Um, ask yourself these five questions. Do I need it? Do I ever use it? Do I ever want to use it? So the question you know, might be, hey, you've got a specific tool for X, Y, Z, but at the end of the day, you, you never actually want to clean your three-story open air fan. You want somebody else to do that or eliminate the need altogether, you know, Hey, do you want to use that tool? Do you want to have that three-story open-air fan? Uh, do I like it? Um, and, you know, basically, is it sentimental? So that's something to consider. And again, I've got a tip on those for you. All right. Now, here's the tip. Think creatively. So a little uh, blog post, uh, simplemost.com. I've got the link right here. But one of the things that they actually talked about and I've heard this from other sources as well, researchers found that people are more willing to give away items of sentimental value if they're able to take a photo of them first. 
So think about that. You've got the, you know, uh, kids artwork. You've got your, um, you know, maybe it's a, a button collection from a, a grandmother. I don't, I don't know. Whatever it is that's important to you, but at the same time, not really advancing your life to the next level. And you're teetering on should you get rid of it or not. Taking a picture will help to bring that memory back. So now you can feel more comfortable saying, I don't need this. I have my picture of it. And that will then bring back those memories of that person that gave you the item or of that item. Maybe it was something specific from your childhood that you're holding on to because you love the memory, but the object itself is not something that you need anymore. So take a picture of it. Another option, this brought to us uh, by an excerpt from uh, Upscale Downsizing by Leslie Lindsay, Lindsley, and uh, she specifically talks about a magazine editor who right-sized their home, and their quote was, I love books and magazines as accessories, even though a tablet takes up less room. So this is talking about like tangible newspapers, magazines, books. And he goes on to say, I pile books here and there. They make my rooms personable. There are always books on my coffee table. It's not clutter. It's part of my lifestyle and therefore my decorating style. Now think about that. Think about how you could incorporate. Maybe you have a large teddy bear collection. Maybe you have a great vinyl collection. Maybe you've got some um incredible uh, motorcycle accessories. These are things that are near and dear to your heart that no matter how small your space gets, you want to retain. You want to think about incorporating those creatively into your new space. Okay, so downsize versus right size. And I want you to think about how these two spaces are similar. Amazingly, so these are virtual tours of some listings I sold in the past. Uh, but what you can see is that they're both 3,100 square feet. You see the one on the left is chopped up. It's two-story. It, it's, it's a great functioning home, offers a lot. But perhaps the, you're, you're kind of thinking through in your lifestyle, that was me 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago. Now I'd like to have main floor living, main floor garage, main floor master, main floor laundry, and a room off to the side for arts, crafts, TV, something, you know, maybe it's a screened in porch off the back, a sunroom, um, some other amenities you could put on the main floor. And then here's the trick. Here's what we're seeing a lot in today's floor plans. You're seeing the main level be very much day-to-day -day living, and then downstairs becomes that space for, you know, entertaining guests or, uh, you know, when when kids and grandkids come stay or friends and family. Um, and it's an opportunity to have additional area because in Michigan, many of our places have some kind of a, a basement, either it be walkout or daylight or a full basement, which would be no windows. Uh, but those those are options that can expand your living space. When it comes to bedrooms, you're going to, you know, have egress windows, you're going to have windows there. Uh, but it's something to think about um, how these spaces are getting utilized, whether you said, hey, a condo is not for me. I've got too much other stuff for a condo. Uh, that's fine. You can find a ranch style house with a basement. You could find a lot of condos with this same floor plan where you're walking in, having main floor living. And then you're having, um, you know, your additional space downstairs for storage and whatnot as well. So it's something to think about. It may total to be the same number of square footage in the place that you're in now, but you're eliminating steps, except for that rare occasion when you want to be able to take advantage of the, the area underneath you in the basement. Number four, think about timing. So each of the different aspects or options would come with different senses of timing. So one might be, you like your space now, you love everything about it, 
but you need to make some changes. Maybe it's putting a master bedroom on the main floor. Maybe it's just as simple as saying, hey, there's three bedrooms on the main floor now, but laundry's downstairs. We've got to move the laundry upstairs. Okay, those are some renovations. Adding a master bedroom, that can be tricky. Bringing laundry up from downstairs, that actually could be something fairly simple. It really depends. And it's going to take a contractor to have you know, the knowledge to really guide you through that. But that said, there's a specific time frame for that. Uh, versus if you said, hey, we're going to box up and move. That's a whole different time frame. So you have to think about the timing of what it might be. A lot of people might start, you know, uh, in the wintertime and say, I'm going to get ready for this move next spring or summer. I'm going to take the next few months. I'm going to prepare my home and then make this move in the next few months. Well, we're here to guide you through that. So let us be a phone call for you and we can start to walk you through that. And during that conversation, we might talk about, hey, is it easier for you to renovate? Maybe it's renovate for now, something inexpensive, like we talked about, bring up the laundry from downstairs and then say, hey, in two years or in three years, we're going to make a move to something different. So you can do these things in stages. Another might be, um, you know, think about all the different options when it comes to condos. You have standalone condos. You have attached condos where you'll see like one door and then a shared roof with another door. Sometimes it's three or four in a row. A, a townhouse. Um, sometimes you'll get main floor living with that. Sometimes not. That's definitely a factor to consider when it comes to a townhouse. A high rise. A lot of times you're, you know, if, if you think that downtown lifestyle is for you, a high rise could be of something of interest. And similar to that, then a loft space. Uh, those we often see downtown as well, uh, or in downtown areas. Another might be to rent for a little while. Uh, we've seen increasing rents, so that's not as attractive to a lot of people. But let's say that you said, hey, it's going to be a space for just a short time before I make a move to another state or before I find that absolutely perfect next location, um, an apartment might be a good option and we can walk you through that as well. Or lastly, a single family uh, floor plan, just, just with a different floor plan than what you have now, similar to what we looked at that 3,100 square foot scenario of a two-story versus a ranch. Um, we're getting a lot of this especially with clients that have, you know, boats or multiple motorcycles or ATVs, they're saying, hey, I don't want the maintenance this house I have, you know, uh, labors me down with. I want to make a move into the uh, uh, lakefront ranch or the uh, three-stall garage or the ranch with an extra pole barn, you know, whatever it is, the condo might not be the right space for you, but maybe it's just simply getting into a space with a different floor plan. We can help you through that too. Tip number five, call John. So as you've seen, tip one through four, we're here to help. And I absolutely love what I do. During the time when we meet, it is about you, what you want to achieve, and how we can help you utilize the market to achieve your goals. I love to be able to put 20 plus years of experience to work for you. I've helped hundreds of other clients be successful in transitioning into the homes of their dreams. And that, with that, in working with those hundreds of people, that's built up a knowledge base that we can really utilize to help you maximize your goals, hopes, and dreams into your new space. So when you reach out to us, what are we going to cover during this session? Uh, most of the time it's it's in person. So we're going to get a chance to really go through your space with you, talk to you about, hey, these are the uh, attractive attributes of your space now that we can emphasize. And these are some things we might want to tweak or recommend. But also we can also just help you look at, hey, do you just need to simply make a couple of tweaks to make this space more livable for yourself for now? And then we can pick this up in five to 10 years when you're when you're done with it and ready for something different. 
Uh, so we target your current space and your next space. We're going to talk about what that's like. Hey, what are the price ranges of what you're looking for and the locations of where you should of where you're looking? You know, like what what would this cost in a new space? Uh, so we're going to talk about that. Uh, we also want to talk about what are the steps to get from where you're at now to where you want to be. What's that? What's the step process look like? What's the timeline look like? Do you need to call, you know, the, the five kids to get all their stuff? You're still storing in their basement first. We're going to walk you through all that stuff. Uh, and then, of course, answering your questions. I love getting questions. I have probably, I always feel like I've gotten every question under the book. And then, you know, the very next question is one that you'd never expect kind of thing. But I love getting questions and the opportunity to just kind of walk you through, hey, uh, what does this mean? <laughs> Where can we go from here? Um, what's the best path of success in today's market, seeing how things are different than they were just a short time ago. So all those things, we love being able to connect with our people. We love being able to help you. And uh, putting up here on the screen, all the different ways you can connect to us. If you go to our website, you can actually just click on the message me button and fill it out. It'll go right to me. You can call me, you can text me, um, you know, easy to get a hold of. And I love being able to help you. So John Rice, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services. Talk to you soon. So thanks for checking out these five tips. John Rice, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services. I'm looking forward to hearing from you, learning what it is that you'd like to achieve. And we'll talk soon.